Hello, hello. Hello. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Dungeon Discourse. A one-on-one -on -one this time, because uh, two of our players uh, are unavailable, were unavailable and weren't there last session, so it wouldn't make sense to have them here in the first place. Uh, we would have Koiba here as well as Duke, but Koiba, um, something came up. Um, so we're just we're just running it solo. It's it's a little one-on-one -on -one between DM and player. Isn't that, isn't that neat? Isn't that quaint? Oh. This means I'm not going to die next session. Uh, you are now my favorite. That is true. That yeah, is true. as the only one who showed up. <laughs> true, true. In spite of literally starting my new job yesterday. I am so proud of you. Mm, me too. Huh? I said me, t me too. I'm proud nice. of me too. <laughs> Death flag spotted. Mm, maybe. Um, no. Hey, Beast. Good to see you, bud. Um, so... As always, Dungeon Discourse, the, the show where we talk about the show, as uh, as, as they say. Um, episode 5. We, we're we're kind of... I'm kind of proud of us for actually sticking to the weekly Dungeon Discourse um, format so far. And I'm yeah, that's why I want... That, that That's why I was like... Yeah, yeah no, I can do sense. it. Like, I, get, yeah. I got no issues. We can do this for an hour or so. You know, I'm happy to. Very good, very um, good. I don't know who this guy over here is, but fuck that guy, you know. <laughs> what? And, Big gray box uh, right big there. Big gray box, dude. Yeah, who the fuck yeah. is that? Um, but yeah, so today we're going to be talking about the last episode. I'm going to give you uh, guys a quick recap in case you missed it. And if you missed it, it's up on YouTube if you want to watch it. You back. know what you should do? What? On the fly, editing is just throw my character out in the in the gray box. Oh, true. We can do that. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. I can do that real quick. Uh, image. Davian. I got a rounds camping two. Uh, I'm so organized this time, dude. Like, I have like little folders that is all about like you know, it has like all the character arts and shit and all the the session notes and all that stuff. And I kind of find myself on the line. Look at you. All the fucking scenes and all that shit. Like we're uh, we're out here, dude. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Here we go. Boom. Boom. This is gonna be fucking this is gonna be fucking huge right out the gates. You know, but you know it is what it is. Fuck huge! Em. Fuck them. So hi everybody. I was on last week? Uh, no, week before last week. Week before last, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm Sir Duke 33. I play Davian Breuer, the Ranger. Yes, the, yes quite. Mm. Quite, quite, quite. Um, yes, you do. Yeah. Just, uh, uh, in, just to kind of, like you know, what are your, just to keep, keep you, keep you talking. I just want your honest yeah. thoughts on the campaign so far. Like the, the for, we've had five sessions now. We're, we're like balls deep in our first like real story arc. What are you, what is your experience so far? I okay. Right, just to, just to talk about say. Uh, oh fuck, dude, my brain is all messed up. You, I, I mean, I had this, I had this revelation earlier, but like, I messaged you asking, like, what the fuck did we talk about on the podcast, <laughs> right? Because yeah. like, you, especially when you're like a content creator and you like, you finish one thing, and then you move on, and your brain it just disappears. And I, yeah. I have that with DS sessions frequently. Yeah. Um, but uh, the session that Soko and Laura were absent. 
was that wasn't last week, was it? Or was uh, it? That was last week, yeah. Oh, okay. I loved. I mean, I really wish they could have been there, just because I I loved that kind of session. Like yeah, the characters that, that kind of yeah. vibing and getting to know each other. In that bit. session, like we had the everyone sat around a table and we're going to dig deep and everyone's going to divulge a little bit of their their history, a like little, their backstory, uh, a, and a little bit of an expose on, on, yeah, on, on the characters. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. And and like I love that shit. Like I absolutely <clears> love just you know playing out character to character interactions. Like that shit is really fun, <laughs> and. Um, like that was a highlight, but the only damper on it is that not everyone was there for that sort of yeah. You know, so we could get a little slice of everybody. You know, um, it's. I mean, so far, like I love the setting. I, I, <clears throat> you know, I think ever since probably. Uh, I can't remember the name of the game, but um, fucking Greedfall. Yeah. Like that is definitely the vibe I went for a little bit. The that that setting is like, oh man, yeah, I actually really like this. Like that that new world frontier mm -hmm. thing, despite you know, well, I mean, obviously, new world did it as well, but like, I feel like it's not a super common one in a lot of, a lot of fantasy settings where, yeah. you know, like high fantasy just tends to be sort of this this whole, you've got you know the world and that's mm -hmm. it, right? But. Yeah, it obviously, makes sense. Uh, right now you're still in a part of this new world that has been kind of established. Like, yeah, in a people are still that kind of familiar with it. For the most part, there's still yeah, some there's stuff like, that it's like, you know, seen. the coast. Yeah. It, where people landed first, like, that's going to be the places mm -hmm. that people are most familiar with. So the further in line we get. Yeah, like, the, as, you, the, the, as you're, you know, down the line, start to travel more like land inward, you're going to get to places, you're going to get to, like, communities of people and races that have genuinely never encountered your Even kind before. Yeah. Or like, you know, the, the, what the fuck are humans? What, what the hell are I think dwarves? You know what I mean? That, which, you know, playing a character like Davian, who's, you know, who's, whose sort of purpose in life is a, a ranger who has mm -hmm. spent sort of his adolescence into adulthood, like, training to explore and, like, track and map new places because he grew up in the in the new world mm -hmm. like that's that's a pretty sweet deal you know yeah. like that down the line we're going to be going in venturing into completely uncharted places and finding things that people have never found before yeah um but I, I over yeah i like I, I obviously i love the setting and you know in terms of sessions like that i just i love i really love just how the story played out i i knew like, right off the bat, after the session zero, I said to Koiba, like... Because you, you mentioned, you know, uh, at the end of the session zero, I'm sure you told everyone, like, oh, this festival's in a week, or whatever. Yeah. Uh, and you're going to be filling your time between then, and I was like, Koiba, the festival's going to happen, we're all going to be in the same place, because that gives us some sort of, like, sensible reason that we're all going to be in the same place at the same time, and mm -hmm. some shit's going to go down that we are going to react to, and that's going to bring us together. Like, that's that's obviously, yeah. it's, a, it's a beautiful way to to sort of make it feel natural to to bring everyone together at the same time. Yeah, I didn't wanna point. I didn't wanna do that typical like, oh you all start in the same tavern and yeah. uh, you know you've or like you've all gotten what we did was with uh, with campaign one was you all got like a letter like delivered to you, right? So yeah. summons by an archmage and uh, he he pick, hand picked you because of your like skills and whatnot. Um this time I was just like you're all just kind of people that meet by circumstance you're all obviously you're all D, &D characters so you are a bit more capable than the average commoner yeah and you you have this sort um, of in, in intuition or like yeah. like innate heroism to some degree yeah, like to some degree to, you like, want to help in that situation obviously exactly and uh, but other than that i was just like you're all you're all in the same city sure uh, all for different reasons but you are all going to attend the festival because everyone else yeah. in the city is so that makes sense and then I just needed to think of, okay, how do I get them all in the same spots? Oh, okay, well, the festival will open in the temple district like, with, like, a parade and a speech, and that's where everyone is going to kind of uh, uh, be at, and that's where shit's going to hit the fan, and that's immediately where we're going to introduce the first, like, long like, ago plot. Do you, did you sort of plan, like... Because, obviously, the, the, the first plot line is snake people trying to mm -hmm. kill the settlers, which, I mean, that's not exactly... Like, like, like that's, that's a 
pretty straightforward storyline for a, for the setting that we're going for. Mm-hmm. But like, how how like r- I guess close to the start of the campaign did you plan like this is how it's going to go down? Uh, pretty He's pretty be the long least. before, and then the whole thing in Canada happened. Where um, I don't know how much of that you picked up, but where they found out that there's a bunch of like native uh, like uh, indigenous people uh, to, uh, in Canada got like. Mm. murdered and and like mass graves started to yeah. get found and that's when i was like oh fuck that's because we have a you know we have some canadian viewers we have a canadian player that's gonna you know this is gonna gonna hit close to home which is why i had to change it up a little bit uh which is uh in, initially it was just gonna be like a it's very typical uh natives versus settlers kind of thing but uh, i kind of wanted to avoid stepping on some toes because of the recent yeah. like findings in Canada about about how their natives got treated and and all that shit uh, which is horrible I mean, ever, by the way like fucking at the end terrible. of the day fucking everyone like yeah yeah but because it's so recently yeah. like found yeah, yeah, yeah. i was like oh god okay i still want to go with spot line but how do i make it so that and that's when i started to develop kind of this this story of like oh but not all you want to rejected the the some of some tribes work closely together with yeah and then i, I mean and then that... i started to think like okay but how do i explain you know okay this group that is uh you know fighting why mm-hmm. are they doing this and that's when i was like okay how about they just worship a god and their god is making them do the wrong things for the right reasons kind of kind of kind of thing um right to kind of still have that same type of storyline but just with completely different motivations that uh just keep you know with with that all in mind making it so that we can still have that same storyline but have it hit a little less close to home uh, especially for our for our canadian player and, and their canadian viewers among us um because of how recent those findings were Amogus. Amogus. Well, uh, yeah, I mean, even in... Yeah, but, like, to answer your question, to get back to that, uh, long yeah. before, long before, I I knew that as soon as I, I wrote the setting of, like, New Land, I wanted there to be some kind of conflict and wars brewing between the natives and the settlers in some places and that sort of thing. Oh, uh, yeah, it makes sense. Like obviously greedful does it really well there's yeah. like almost a love triangle of factions in greedful yeah because like, um, I mean, the big kicker of greedful as well is like you as fucking i forget the title but it's, it sounds fucking pretentious fuck uh uh are like it's the trading half, company but half I, I native know. right like it turns out that you're 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 oh you're on all manawi or yeah, whatever yeah, yeah, right yeah and uh, you, you turn out to be half native and that's why yeah you kind of tread the line and have to make some decisions based on oh do i side with the settlers or do i side with the natives and yeah and then there's like the sort of the faction that the protagonist is a part of kind of sympathize with the natives and then the religious faction does not and then yeah, you know, dude, then the, there's the, the natives that... led by the fucking the lady. I forgot. I forget the fucking yeah. And then and then the literally crusaders, like literally, yeah. you know, fucking crusaders, pretty much. Uh, like and then like the the natives are at odds with each other, in that same sort of degree. Like I remember this one NPC of that faction being an absolute fucking bell end. You first encounter him when they're like burning people or creatures at like this big. Yeah, stake, he's he's a big he's, fucking uh, like an inquisitor or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah he's like, a big fucking he's a prick, dude. Like yeah. well play a well written character because I hated him but fuck man, um, but it's, yeah. Oh God, yeah, it's good. I, the, it, there's a remaster coming out, right? Like a like console, a next gen, like a next gen, yeah, next gen upgrade. edition. Or I'm pretty sure yeah. like there's gonna be some additional content as well. Um, but yeah. Think, anyway, we're yeah. not gonna talk about Greedfall, anyway. but that that was no. definitely an inspiration for for yeah. Or well, no, I was I would say I knew I wanted to do the setting, and then I looked at Greedfall to kind of see how they did it. So I definitely took some inspiration. Not necessarily the idea of a brave new world, but definitely I took some inspiration from and looked at that game to see how they did it uh, regarding the whole like settlers versus uh, natives and, and yeah that stuff. A little bit of a, um, a more kind of romantic yeah telling than history. Yes, exactly. Um, so last session, mm. you uh, traveled from Southwold in a cart with some horses uh, procured by Kess mainly and, caramel, uh, and you have horses. no idea you have no idea really how or or what and that raised some questions especially in Davian it was like yeah. uh, how, how, how do 
Yeah. Um, he's a, he traveled. He's a sensible boy. Up north, northeast-ish, uh, through New Daramuth, uh, and further beyond into the jungle, encountering a Yuan-Ti, pure blood, uh, huntress named Sirin, who uh, got caught off guard by a saber-toothed jaguar. Uh, managed to take it down, but not without herself, get, you know, being unscathed. Um, she suffered some wounds, uh, but you patched her up, and she took you to her tribe of people in Sethka, one of the uh, charted settlements in the in the slithering jungle. Um, met her her leader uh, and learned some things about. Uh, your destination, Sektha, its leader, the fact that there's uh, some some scary shit going on there, including the presence of a Hydra, a Hydra, which. Uh... But Davian has another reason to want to go there, and yeah, has been and has been Davian has ha has been having these visions, typically to do with fire. Uh, a, a strange voice whispering in the back of your head telling you to claim your destiny. Yeah. And last session you had a vision that was the first vision that really gave you a concrete goal besides yeah. just to claim your destiny. You saw in the chamber where also the Hydra was um, a gemstone, a red gemstone shaped like a teardrop. I got it written and, down. And you... Uh, Kulsuf's tear, something like that. There you go. And you got told that that is something you require to claim your destiny. Well, I mean, not not in black and white, but I mean, no, you know, yeah, like, the writing's on the wall. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. Um, which, next session, you uh, are going to be traveling to uh, Sektha and encountering whatever the fuck they have waiting for you, including, probably, said Hydra. <laughs> um... I am super excited for that, by the way. That's gonna be that's gonna be like the first real like whew, that's gonna be a fucking fight, dude. I can't um, wait to see how it goes down. Cause I feel mm -hmm. like since, you know, in the last sort of couple of years, we've we've become better players in general. Mm -hmm. I, I think my my strongest <clears throat> point thing to point to in terms of that is the one shots where we were doing the um uh, the Wild Mount Explorer, Explorer's Guide to Wild Mount Adventures, where mm -hmm. like we were pretty huge brain in some of the. Well, I was I was enormous brain, you know. Of course, um, very humble too. Being the very mastermind well. rogue, uh, <laughs> I am the humblest guy I know. <laughs> yeah. I I think I think that uh like I mean the the thing is we're good at like all right how are we gonna tackle this, but we like over plan every Sometimes, time. Yeah, yeah. We like over plan and overthink <laughs> and we're like trying to tackle every possible sort of outcome when sometimes it is just as simple as like walk in and kill the bad guy or sometimes you have this cool ass plan and then you guys roll like shit and then it always goes to shit i mean yeah that's that's, that's also, also that's part of the nature, fun nature that's of the game that's D &D, right yeah. like i mean i'm trying to think like some of this we did some we did some smart shit we did some dumb shit like it specifically in the one shots you know we we, we climb over the wall of this fort and then Someone started setting stuff on fire, and then like we were hiding behind the thing that was on fire, and yeah. then we had no idea where to go to get to the door to the it, like it was a whole mess. So, I mean, Seth Sethka, no, Sekta. That's where you. I heading. mean, I'm thinking. I'm picturing like Mayan temple. <laughs> okay. If the architecture of Sethka has anything to go on, it is like. Like this, this ziggurat like structure in the yeah. middle, surrounded by a bunch of like round stone huts, which is where, where you want to typically live in. And um, there's a lot of them, I guess. I mean, we, we, there's, they've been gathering, something's been going on. Jeremiah got teleported somewhere. I think we're gonna show up and we're gonna be like, I right, plan time. And there's gonna be like a lot of things that I, I, I feel like we're gonna just. I feel like we are going to stumble and trip and yeah, face plant also our way. Partially why, like, obviously, one of the criticism that you specifically gave me uh, after the last campaign was you wish there were more, like, 
DM played NPCs uh, that uh-huh. kind of traveled with the party. So yeah. that's, where, that's where Siren comes in. That's like the first DM played NPC that's going to be sticking around for a few sessions, helping you out. So we're going to um, have a sort of a but she an, an is angel also, on the She also, like, she's Yuan T. She knows things about those yeah. people. Uh, so she could provide some input uh, to kind of give you guys a bit of a helping hand. Oh, I fucking um, hope so. And uh, plus, uh, it's an extra body in a, in a fight as well. Uh, also a ranger, funnily, funnily enough. Um, so that, that, that should definitely provide you guys with, with some extra input. And uh, <clears throat> just information, knowing what you're up against, uh, knowing the ways they could fight. Uh, obviously, she knows, you know, what kind of traps they would per- 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 perhaps use yeah. surrounding their, their, their place and how to avoid them or how to disarm them. Uh, she probably knows the layout a little bit because she's been there before, before all of this. And, uh, and, and knows some of the important people in said settlement. Um, and that's her I thing. I think one of... One of the questions I, I, I will have is, obviously, <clears throat> I had a dream. Mm-hmm. Dream seemed, I, I sort of zoomed through the labyrinthine tunnels of the ziggurat. Am I going to remember? <laughs> Am I going to remember when we get there? I, your, I uh, think I'll think just I'll like froze and now your camera's not in sync with your voice anymore. It's pissing me off. Oh. Great. Oh, wait. It just fixed itself. Wait, oh. it fixed itself. Okay. It just did. Okay. I was going to say, watch me turn it off and back on again, and then my lighting's fucked, and i got to fix that, but okay. <laughs> we're good, we're good. Um, yeah, am I going to remember? But other than that, like, i going to fight a fucking Hydra, dude. I mean, mm. we got we got bigger fish to fry than can we find our way through a tunnel. Yeah. Um, I mean, I can't remember the guy's name. Rick Sal is the one in charge of the uh, the bad guys. Nuxa? Yeah. Nuxa, yeah, is, is the, the one in charge of the good guys? Yeah. He told us to basically, if we cut off the head of the, not it's, of the Hydra. No, but cut the head of the snake. Uh, you know. It's... Yeah. If we kill Rixal, you know, things might go better, but... Things will scatter. I don't know, I don't know man. I, I'm, I'm, I'm worried. I'm, I mean, obviously, you know, you haven't killed us yet. Um, I mean, for I a whole Ill- campaign. I threw at you at level one or two last campaign. So what's a, what's a Hydra going to do, dude? Yeah, if, well, um, I mean, that's true. Fine. It's. I guess if I, you. And the thing is, I just like um, to throw like big, scary, high CR monsters at you, but like nerf the fuck out of them so that it's an interesting. Like it's like a <gasps> we're fighting that at level two, but at the same time, it's, yeah. it's balanced and you're not gonna fucking wipe. You know what I mean? Like right. Unless and it's still unless fun. The dice really fucking hate you. Still, still a big boss fight. Yeah, and still a big boss fight. Yeah, I'm. Um, I don't know how. I guess I guess some expertise. There is some some knowledge. We we're not gonna just. Hopefully, we don't just flounder and like end up <laughs> making it making it destroy us. Because obviously, you cut one head off, two heads grow back. I don't know if that's how it works in Five E. Probably. Uh, Otherwise, they have a, like a yeah, they have a mechanic like that. It's not a, it's not right. exactly that, but they have a mechanic like that. Yeah. Because uh, I think Brooks, I think in character Brooks is like just hit it in the body until it's dead <laughs> seems like a pretty solid idea mm-hmm. otherwise cut cut the heads off and burn the stumps that's I, th- I think I don't know although you know the Hydra in Dark Souls didn't need to burn shit you just cut its heads off and it died yeah pretty easy not playing Dark Souls uh, army. <laughs> no <laughs> no uh, no yeah uh, but, it's gonna be fun it's gonna be I'm very excited to just see because you're gonna infiltrate this like this is like you're going into the belly of the beast. Yeah. Uh, maybe, we don't maybe. have endless supplies of like disguise self and mm-hmm. invisibility and <laughs> blessing of the trickster or whatever the fuck is going to actually help us out. It's going to be a challenge. That mm-hmm. was one of the things like, I mean, obviously like one of the things when I made Davian and why I made him human is because there are more is that did you see that um <laughs> I th- my my camera lagged for me this time but i don't oh. think for you um there are more races with dark vision than without it right yeah and it's like just the, all of these crazy innate like bonuses that we were so used to especially when you know we've played for however long to level like 15 something like that yeah i don't remember like exactly 14, what level 15. You um <clears throat> yeah now we're just <sighs> babies again still still level two not more 
not much more to my name than a hunter's mark and a mm -hmm. favored foe if I need it. Yeah, I don't know. And also, none of us are like crazy stealthy. No. At all. Like. I know Belle or Kess has like insane stealth bonus because of. Either because of her race or because of uh, her her ar archetype, but she has some. Like, Kess crazy is, is dexterous as well. Does all the thieves' tools and things like that. Yeah, let me have a look. See so, real quick. Um, let me quickly open D&D Beyond. Ooh. Sponsor us, please. Thank you. Uh, if you campaign, Kesslin. She has a plus five to stealth and gets. But you know, plus five, not exactly mind blowing. No, but she gets something because she's special oh, regarding stealth. Um, uh, I think I have like a plus three. Oh, I just maybe. learned something about Bell's character. Oh. She has that, like, four-hour trans shit. Or sleep. Oh. So. Um, oh. Yeah, uh, cunning intuition. When you make a charisma or uh, stealth... When you make a performance or stealth check, you can roll a d4 and add the number roll to your ability check. So she gets a oh, d4 okay. bonus. But yeah, it says here trans. You don't need to sleep, but meditate semi-consciously for four hours a day. So she does... Yeah, I mean, it wouldn't surprise me. If just so in I know, character, I don't know if Bell is aware of that. <laughs> no, I, I, I it wouldn't surprise me if Bell was keeping it from us, just for maybe, the sake of maybe, it from maybe, maybe. Like, no good reason. Just, I mean, you know. Uh, I think like just hanging on their lamp. Ranger gets some wild stuff at higher levels for for rest. You can, I, I think it's like tenth level though, but you can recover a point of exhaustion with a short rest. It's so you. Basically, like, never need to sleep. <clears throat> Shit. Um, I have a question for you. Because mm. obviously, you've had uh, your your visions, or Davian has had his visions. Um, I'm curious to see, like, where do you think this is going to lead? Like, what is it? What do you expect if you keep following these these uh, these I'm, visions, so to say? Some something volcanic. That's really it. Like. As, at least, especially, like, as far as, sort of, Davian's know-how goes, it it's all fiery-related, and it mm -hmm. started happening from a, a trip to a volcano, right? Like, that's really it. That's all he knows. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> Excuse me. Is Sektar even remotely close to a volcano? I don't think so. Like, the... the uh, Nuxar mentioned that the... The fucking gem, Corsair's Tear, is from a volcano, but they just like kind of yoinked it and now they have it. And that's pretty much really like all there is. So I think his. I think his, his motivation now is like get the stone and maybe return it or like something. Like that might be sort of the, the, the plan. Because if it's the same volcano, he knows where it is. Still got a map. That he made mm -hmm. from, I don't know, traveling from Briar's town to the volcano. That's really all he all he has mapped. But yeah, I think I think yeah, I, that 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 would be his natural reaction is find this gem because clearly that's now at the center of the visions, premonitions, whatever they are, mm -hmm. and then return it. Fair enough. Fair enough. I maybe find out what it does, but I, I Nooks, I didn't seem that useful. He didn't seem to have that much to say about it. Mm -hmm. Maybe that'll change when it's in our possession, but that's, that's yeah, that's the, the MacGuffin right now, I guess. Alrighty. Cool, mm. cool, 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 cool. Uh, obviously, I know, but I'm not going to say. <laughs> uh, mm. <laughs> we'll find out. We'll fuck around and find out. Um, I mean, definitely fuck around. If there's one thing this party's good at, 
It's fucking it's around. Fucking around. Yeah, it's Finding true. out. Not so much. I want to play a little game with you. Oh god, no. Are we doing trivia? We're doing trivia. We're doing Dungeons Am I allowed to trivia? use my notes? No. I want to see how good you do without your notes. Badly. Alright, let me close this. <laughs> uh, I mean, one question you already answered uh, that I had written down, so okay. you, should be, you should get at least one point here. Uh, so what I want you to do is I just want you to uh, write the answer down on like a on like a open a word document or or a, a, oh, yeah, a page yeah, or a notebook or whatever the fuck notepad bam. Um, I've got seven questions for you. Okay. You're gonna write your answer down, and at the end we're going to uh, have a look see and see how many you get correct. Oh, no. So. <laughs> okay. The first question. What is the name of the red gemstone Davin had a vision of? Oh well, yeah, okay. We got cost Corsus tier. There you go. Um, which is not a million miles away from, I swear, one of the stones from Ocarina of Time, but I, I, I don't remember what any of those are called. I swear one of them's a tier. No like idea. The, never, never played. <laughs> maybe the water one. It's in Jabu Jabu's belly. They're all named after the goddesses, which for some reason, Din's, Din is one. Mm -hmm. Um. Right. Din. I don't know. Very good. Question number two. Do I get extra points for this? No. Okay. What is the name of the red dragon worshipper that you got told about in your session zero? Oh, I have no idea. Absolutely no clue at all. And the worst of it is, I'm pretty sure Koiba said it like last session. I think so. Yeah. I mean, you just write something down or question marks. That's fine too, I guess. <laughs> all right. <clears throat> What is the name of the Primus of the Imperial Trade Company? <laughs> the Primus? Yeah. The one that... It wasn't her that was shot, was it? No. The one that was that leads the trade company and is part of the council and was like, oh, is she involved with whatever the fuck's going on in her company? Oh, I... Even if it was the woman who got shot, I can't remember her name either. <laughs> Wait... Tranliel, that was her. True, true. Oh, yeah. fuck. Um, <clears throat> we got a couple of easy right. ones coming up, so. Okay. Okay. What race is General Kron? That, that is easy. General Kron is a half orc. Okay. What is the color scheme prominent throughout all of Eldilon? I think it, it's blue and white, maybe. It, I think it's blue and white, but okay. I could be wrong. What race was the dead owner of the house from which the assassin tried to kill Tranlio? It was a blue dragonborn. Okay. Now, finally... Name one name of the sex workers employed at the Friendly Giant Tavern. You were introduced to four. I just need one name. It's like, it's like Rob Riddle Rod or something. I don't remember any of the others. <laughs> uh, oh, I thought I, I thought I remember the tiefling that uh, tried to mess with. Um... The Lazarin? I can't, I can't even remember Lazarin's name. <laughs> All, right. All right. Oh, man. Okay, wait. Okay, question two. The name of the dragon cult leader. Yish. It's, it's not an easy name. No, of course. It's, it's not an it's, easy name. It's fantasy. Mm -hmm. They never are. I mean, Robert Rod is pretty easy. <laughs> no, I, yeah, I guess. Like, General Kron isn't hard, but like, Tranliel, for example, everyone in the party's name can fuck off. <laughs> except except Brooks and Jax, but even then it's like, oh, Brooks with a K-S, Jax with an X. Unbelievable. Yeah. I spelt Digon and probably, I, I know I spelt Lazarus' name wrong, and I spelt mm -hmm. Digon's name wrong. I probably, I didn't know it was Kesslin for a while. <laughs> because, like, I don't look at the... 
I don't look. I don't watch the stream. I have it open, but I like just have the chat, so I don't like see the the overlays. So I just like, yeah, I just like gave it my best guess at spelling a Lazarus. We had a session zero together, and Corey was like, "Is the did you spell it wrong on purpose?" I'm like, "No. <laughs> Why would I do I just, that? How did you spell it then? Uh, I have to check. I think I spelt it with a U, possibly. Like, a, a, in, at the end, like a U-N at the end. Oh, Elazrun? Oh, no, no, I-N. I put Elazrin. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah. All right, and then so, I, again, I spelled with an O instead of a U. Let's have a, have a look at your answer. So the first question, what's the name of the red gemstone that I haven't had a vision of? I wouldn't have got that if I hadn't literally, we hadn't talked about it earlier. Mm -hmm. there's, there's just no way. Yeah, so what's your answer? Lock it in. Pulsu's tear. Pulsu's tear is correct. What is the name of the red dragon worshipper that you got told about in your session zero? I put Dave Chappelle. Jirden Fearkrag. I would have, I, I would have, I would have counted Jirden just the first name correct as well. See, when when we were first introduced, I wrote. I think you introduced him as like Jirden. Yeah, could be. And so, which I wrote Y R D E N. Which is a cool name. I have to remember that one. Um, what is the name of the Primus of the Imperial Trade Company? Dal Ashtari. Ah, uh, I literally just wrote baloney like that. <laughs> That's all I have. What race is General Kron? Carfork, baby! Correct. What's the color scheme prominent throughout all of Eldilon? I said blue and white. It could... It, it could blue could, and white could, is could. correct. Okay, it's like, it could be blue and gold or something, but yeah, no. Uh, what race was the dead owner of the house from which the assassin tried to kill Tranliel? Blue Dragonborn. Dragonborn is correct, which is the race. Ooh. That was the question. That was the answer. So oh, you get wait, the wait, 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 wait. But he was black. He was black. Yeah. yeah I, mm, do, and have we finally, come across a blue Dragonborn at some point, though? Because I remember everyone joking on... No, I it was the... So. It was the Bahia was blue? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And finally, name one of the sex workers employed at the Friendly Giant Tavern. Yeah, Rob, Rob Riddlerod. Correct. So let me quickly do the math here. You have one, two, three, four, five out of seven correct. Which puts you... Uh, Not the names, apparently. Tied first place with Laura. She also oh. had five. Ethan, second place with four. So that's the Is, leaderboard Were right they now. the same questions? Uh, no, different. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So you're tied for first on the, in the you know imaginary leaderboard. You're tied for first with uh, with Laura at the moment. So I, I mean, five out of seven, and w without looking at your notes, granted one we discussed earlier, but you know yeah. fuck it. You uh, to be fair, you named that gem. Like it wasn't me saying it was Kosa's tear. Kosa's tear. I was just like we were talking about the gem. And you were like yeah, Kosa's tear. So yeah. like it wasn't like I gave you the answer per se. Um, I definitely spelled that wrong by the way. I have no idea how that's spelled. Uh, K O W -S, S U T H. Okay. Right. Oh, I'll, I'll amend that at some point. Um, but five out of seven, not too shabby, not too bad, not too bad. We, we take those, we, we take, take those. those. I mean, yeah, names. I'm terrible with names, I guess. It, like the only, the only reason I remember Noxa and already forgot the bad guy, Rixal. Right, is because yeah, they, they were written on the page. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> but NPC names. I don't think I could... The only NPC I think I could name from Campaign 1 right now mm -hmm. is Peter Riz. And only because, like, I just thought he was a cool dude. Like, he was dope, and I interacted with him a uh, lot. Oh, dude. I'm, I'm not going to say anything. I'm not going to oh, say anything. Uh, there's nobody, but that's not a name. True. Uh, no, I was going to say something regarding Peter Riz, but I'm, uh, it's much more cool if you guys find out in game. Uh, <laughs> so I'm not going to say anything. Um, yeah, but like I said, five out of seven. Shared first place. Yeah, we take, we job, take those. Job. You take yeah. those, absolutely. Um, next session, next Sunday. Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. A Hydra. This Sunday. Yeah. Like this coming three Sunday. Days. I love yeah. that Dungeon Discourse is like exactly the halfway point between last session and next session. That funnily enough works out pretty perfectly. Yeah. Um, I'm excited. It's going to be your first, uh, like, delving into proper, like, enemy territory of the yeah. campaign. It's going to be the first time you uh, 
like the first real boss fight if you get there if you don't like spend three hours just clearing out like clearing through the camp before even getting down there you know because you also still I have feel a so unprepared like second level it, it, it's hard to feel prepared when your max HP is like 15 like that, that's terrifying mm -hmm. like the one thing that gives me sort of hope is Elazarin seems like really strong like i yeah, just Elazarin is powerful dude fucking, excuse me like boon to the party overall the i guess it's his divine uh channel divinity or whatever the the big I believe temporary so. hp boost but that's huge yeah that's fucking huge especially yeah. at, at that level yeah and Elazarin also is definitely a big dick healer slash keeping people third alive, level's man. coming dude third level's coming and i, I swear can, to god i can say i can i can say that after the Hydra fights, you shall level yeah. up if you survive. What? Okay. What I'm worried about now, though, is is the is the tier gonna have implications with my level up? Probably not. Probably not. No. No spoilers or anything, but probably not. So we will uh, have bud. I all I'll say regarding that is um, that tier is only a step of that journey. Oh yeah. Okay. So like, uh, so it's gonna be. It's we gonna will be have bud. Yeah. Oh no. After next like after next session, you'll be able to summon Burb. If you survive. Oh no, the shoe bill. He's coming. Hell yeah. Well so he'll finally. Pray to God that our adventures right? remain above ground and outdoors so that he can spread his like fucking four meter wingspan and <laughs> annihilate bad guys. It might be tricky in the jungle actually. Now that I think about it. Might be a little tricky. I mean they 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 live in like I, I guess so, I guess. Tropical so. East Africa or something. Yeah, it's true. It's oh, pretty true. Yawning, dude. Fuck. Like, um, worst what's... comes to worst, hmm? like the bird can swoop, attack, and disengage without provoking an opportunity attack. So he just flies above the canopy and then just goes, whoosh, whoosh, you know. It's got like I need to get, like, I need to get like a fucking coconut and then cut it in half and then just whenever he like opens his beak or makes a sound, I just doo -doo 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 with the fucking coconut, dude. Um, um like a rhythm block. Yeah, I guess, I guess. I have a question. Because mm. you're in charge of the uh, podcast version uh, of Dungeon Select uh, mm. project. What's the status? It, it might... Okay, if... Because... <clears throat> right, here's the plan. We've got one intro. I'm just going to do the next intro for the sake of ease. Mm -hmm. But we should be able to have fir just the first half of episode one, probably up tomorrow. Okay. So... As for the rest, because I want what I want, idea in a perfect world, I get every single cast member to record. Like we've got like a little basic script that's mm -hmm. just, for example, like, "Hi, I'm Sir Duke Thirty Three. I play Davian in Dungeon Select Campaign Two, and then like you know, it's on Twitch, whatever. Uh, yeah. Get every do that for their own character, and they just do the intro, like for for an episode." And in a rotation, yeah, and so like just rotate them, yeah, yeah, and just reuse them. I might. Do we, do we record a second? Line I, yeah, I was for the part twos. So I'm, I might be able to edit it. it or something, and just be like, "You're listening to Dungeon Select," and that, like, that'll be it <laughs> for the part two. I don't know, um, or, um, I yeah, we could do a second thing. I don't know. Because yeah, it, like it would have to be like... Ideally, um, we would have the podcast be up to date with uh, with with campaign, of course. Like that would yeah. be perfect. That would be ideal. That um, will ha that that will happen as soon as like as soon as all of the every bit of voice like every bit of and stuff are intros done. are done, it yeah. it should just be like, and they all go up. But yeah, I was thinking about the second half intro. Um, I mean, um, I could just do this them. Sunday we'll have everyone minus Soko, so you can just ask them to fucking yeah get in call a little early yeah. or get on a one-on-one -on -one with you like individually and just you coach them through oh my god they're cheering outside i don't know what's going on the hell um Oops. it's thursday it's like students get drunk nights that's thursdays typically into in tilburg it's a weird choice a day yeah it's just always kind of been a thing Th thursday is like students go out tonight but obviously because covid and bars close at 10 there's just been parties here every week on thursday <laughs> what about friday I don't know. Like, do well, on Thursday, a lot of the Friday? bars in Tilburg do like discounts and shit for students, and like you can play like like you can literally play games at the bar. They're like, oh, 
It's Thursday, so you order your drink, you roll the die, and uh, the die decides whether you get a discount. You think that's or because, or like, searching. Friday is, like, the normal people's weekend? Yeah. So they're, like, yeah. I think rather so. than the double double the rush, we'll do a special thing on Thursday for students. Yeah. Um, um, okay, so that's good, yeah. good to know. Podcast, uh, podcast versions soon, TM. Uh, mm -hmm. We're going to be splitting them in two parts because the entire chunk, uh, the entire chunky four-hour episodes are... Officially too long, uh, unless you yes. fucking find a platform that you pay a lot of dollar dollar bills to. Yeah, well, no, not necessarily a lot, but it's like we already use Anchor for one podcast. We know how it works. Yeah, that's true. And the ability to get stuff distributed, especially widely I, I, I feel like crazy. especially on Spotify is fucking huge. So we can do yeah, that through Anchor. That's, that's awesome. Yeah, the most direct thing it feels yeah. like. Um, um, so that'll be soon. Awesome. Good shit. Good shit. We could do the same. We I, I assume. Are we planning to do the same for this? Because that would just be the same process. Um, These go to Bell, so I could just be like, "Yo, Bell, can I get the audio from Dungeon Discourse?" I don't know. And then, Honestly, I, I, th I remember you asking me before, and I think back then I was like, "Eh, probably not." Um, they okay. I mean, uh, obviously, Critical sure. Role sets the stand for this sort of shit. Mm -hmm. Like, their talk show is also on Spotify. Pretty much, it like I think it goes like episode and then the part the Machina. talk show and then yeah yeah that's the one i'm pretty sure mm -hmm. which we probably wouldn't be able to do even if you wanted to because i have no idea how you would retroactively lay that out um no, i have no idea but un unless we figure this out like right new <laughs> like me and bell or whatever and then i can start uploading them in that order uh, i'll say because you're the one kind of in charge of the the, the podcast version of things, and uh, you know you just got a job. I don't want to overwhelm you with stuff. If you think you can add discourse to that list of things that you want to spread out podcast form, and you are sure that it won't um, get you in trouble time wise and whatnot, then I I'd fuck it, go for it. The I'll difference it. with these things, you. the difference of these things from the podcast is like. It's just the Discord. Like, it's just the recording of the audio as it, as it was live. Like, it's not like yeah. there's a huge amount of work. And for Discourse, like, I'll just be the... I'll just be the intro voice for the Discourse because it's easier to just be like... <laughs> to not have everyone record a bunch of random different little voice snippets. Mm -hmm. um, which was I was going to say, which is what I might just do for the part two of the Dungeon Select episodes as well. Where I could just be like, this is part two of whatever we're naming the episodes dungeon select camping to session one insert name here whatever well you know yeah i would just do the the, the name yeah fuck them I, everyone already knows they're listening to dungeon select at that point or at least I yeah hope so. true 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 all right awesome uh do you have any questions you want to ask regarding our campaign or anything else before we, uh, uh well i mean off? i we, we know we know we're going to be third level i'm probably I'm not going to get anything more out of you about the stone. No. <laughs> um, hmm. What the... F what is... I'm... Okay, I, I, you're not going to answer this. For good... I mean, good reason. Mm -hmm. uh, but that, f that shit with Kess has got me scratching <laughs> in my head. Like, out, out of character and in character. It's like... It, what makes me a little, I mean, I guess, I guess, like Davian was the most, like, what, what's going on here? Mm -hmm. Everyone was a little too lax, except maybe a Lazarin, but I think a Lazarin just sort of follows suit. But like, I feel like Brooks didn't really have any questions there, you know? Like, come, come, oh, the homie disappears. Yeah, I mean, he was Brooks, there. Brooks was with them, and Brooks wanted to steal one, and then Kess was like, no, 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 I got this. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Disappears uh, into the night, comes back. I'll yeah, say, horse and cart. I'll say um, they have they they can do stuff like that because of a decision they made in their session zero. Two horses and a cart. All I'll say regarding that is everything has its price. She yeah, didn't, she didn't get it for free. <laughs> yeah, right. Clearly, that I think that's the biggest concern. It's like, what did this? What did this cost you? Like, you aren't missing any limbs. I'm not missing any coin as far as I know, but <laughs> I mean, how much? Two horses and a cart? It's a, it's a considerable venture. Look up what the uh, what the like pricing would be of that horse? Yeah, Prime IV. 
So your average ho riding horse will cost you 75 gold uh, a pop. That is a lot. Uh, two horses, right? 150 gold. Yeah. You might not get like a, 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 a stud, right? A stallion. And a um, chariot like cart, like a, a, a big, a, a good sized fucking. I was going to say a chariot is fucking small. Yeah. Uh, a, a cart, like the one that you're in, about 15 yeah. gold. So that's 165 gold worth of stuff. That Which is probably as much money as we have right now, like total almost, if not far uh, off. Maybe. I don't know. Not like sure. I have 28, sure. but I did buy a bunch of fancy arrows. You but... did buy a bunch of fancy arrows. That's going to be yeah. cool. That's going to be cool to uh, fucking like, see you use those in combat. Oh, okay. Yeah, no, that is a question I have. Oh. So where did the arrows come from? The arrows? Um, yeah. There is a... Hold on. I just closed my fucking chrome. Give me a sec. I have... Um... There, is, there was a Reddit, um, which is... If my fucking... Uh, a Reddit thread on D&D &D behind the scenes, mm. which is just uh, the arrow varieties and prices of, and there's just like this entire like list that someone made with a variety of different arrows and their price points and how much you get per bundle and shit like that. Pretty cool. Some some nice. cool stuff on there. Poison cloud arrows, mage fire arrows, ice arrows, thunderclap arrows, silver, mind piercers, dude. Unholy Little. arrows. A little upset about the one-time use. Uh, of course, it only makes sense. Yeah. That some kind of, like, alchemical clay pot <laughs> that goes into smoke is only one-time use. But, um... Yeah, and he also added the notes cool. that is like, oh, any of these arrows may be plus one, plus two, plus three arrows of slaying, or arrows of slaying, as described in the, the Dungeon Master Guide. This will increase their value um, accordingly, and any of the magical arrows... Can also be silvered, which is adds another hundred gold to the price points. Woo! Yes, I mean silvered arrows is mainly for like fighting like lycanthropes and shit like that. Or I might I might have sent you it already, but I don't know if it's still in my bookmarks. I had an amazing like Reddit post about the astral plane for when uh the campaign that I DM'd you guys managed to fucking wander your way in there. <laughs> that if we ever go, like it was amazing. Like if you have a need, I definitely, for that. Um, because you're in like this, this like wild new terrain. Throw, I, I definitely had, I like like the gif as a race are very cool. Yeah. And I'll probably, I'll find some way to fucking uh, implement that shit. Let's so sure. kill Vlakith. That's uh, at level two, bro. Fuck it. Send it. <laughs> Vlakith's like. Oh. <laughs> There is a stat block for a Vlakith. Probably. But it's like second edition or something. Vlakith the Lich Queen. Wizards. Um, CR 23. Doable. Winnable. <laughs> yeah. Um, Wait, is this the one with dancing silver greatsword and yeah. three legendary resistances a day? Yeah. And innate spellcasting psionics? Yes. Oh, what? Spell save DC 25. Mm -hmm. And a Usually. plus 17 to hit with spell attacks. Not very high HP, though. She can innately cast Power Word, Kill, and Wish. Yeah. Finger Just of sure Death, can. Power Word, Stun, Disintegrate. Like, <laughs> okay, Blackus, relax. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude, I love, dude. I fucking, I'm, I'm excited for Sunday. Sunday's gonna be so fucking good. Um, with that said, mm. I would like to thank you for showing up. Yeah, changing this course a little one on one. Course, exactly. uh, I'm excited for Sunday. It's gonna be fucking great. This will be on YouTube on uh, every Saturday, uh, the day before the next session. Dungeon Discord will be up, and ready for you to watch. If you are impatient, you can always rewatch it here. I all, I put all the. Um, uh, the VODs of stuff. Uh, I highlight them so that the VODs don't disappear after 30 or 60 days so that they're kept forever. And I put them in little collections on the channel page on Twitch so that you can rewatch uh, on Twitch I'm if you want to. And tied first for trivia. And you are so. tied first for trivia. So now we just I have to think... do trivia with uh, the three others and we'll, we'll see. Yeah, I think Koi Koiba might 
If I can't... Okay, I thought Laura was the... Was going to get 7 out of 7, frankly. <laughs> I don't know what questions they got, but... Uh, I, I, can, I, think, I can have a look. I, can, I think Koiba might end up in the first place. Um, I have to open up my phone. Hold on, give me a sec. I can have a look see for you. The questions were pretty, like... Pretty uh, equal, difficulty-wise. Mm. Um, have a look. Let's have a look. Let's have a look. Uh, the first question was an easy one. Was uh, how many years has the city of Eldalon been established? Oh yeah, we celebrated its twenty fifth. Uh, what's the what was the title of the leader of the trade company? So not the name, but the title. Which right, which Primus. I already forgot. Yeah. Uh, what is the what was the color eyes uh, the color of the eyes of the ASMR you encountered in the uh, tavern you were in? Black. Uh, the name of the city guard. Um, the race of the um, per, the the individual that came to help you compare the handwriting and stuff. No. Halfling. Same thing. I mean, uh, what was the names of the t the twin gnomes that competed in the wrestle arm tournament? Oh, Topsy and Turvy. Yeah, and then I I threw a throwback question in there. What's the name of the Empress? Oh, no fucking clue. Almar. <laughs> no Which fucking. Also came clue. up this campaign uh, because she uh, she had a little, little speech at the beginning of the festival. Yeah, she called in. Phone she called in. Yeah, you know, she zoomed in from home because yeah, know, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she can't she can't fly out obviously because <laughs> the, the restrictions. She didn't want to have to get tested and quarantine, exactly. so she just zoomed in. Yeah, I mean, dragon COVID, dude. Shit, how? I mean, mm. fuck. It really. I heard, I heard spread from dragons. So. Oh really? Yeah. Shit, thought it was bats. Um. <laughs> anyway, thanks for watching uh, Dungeon Discourse. Thanks for being here, Duke. Appreciate you as always. Um, we'll see you guys on Sunday for session six, where shit's gonna oh. get real. Unrelated, but Opsi should be available for past the salt tomorrow. Nice. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks for watching, everybody. Uh, I might go live on my own channel real quick here yeah, to to play it. some play some vampire game with Beast and Jake. I think. Is so, yeah. it like conflict of interest to raid your own channel from Dungeon Select? <laughs> I mean, I, I physically can't. <laughs> no. <laughs> That's why you need a stream PC and a gaming PC, right? So yeah, that you can true. Technically, stream like Dungeon Discourse on the gaming PC and then go live on yeah, the stream true, PC. Yeah, true, true, mm. true. All right. Thanks for watching, everybody. Peace out. See you next time. Peace out, gamers. Bye-bye. She fucking knows. That's the perfect outro. Like, I'm going to leave that in when I send the highlights to Bill.